co-host Danielle Perriman. Jewel Clayfish so is not with us today, and by this music, you know it means girls' night out. I don't know why I started this, but I'm glad I did because this is so much fun. But of course, I want Joel here. Joel is the heart and soul of this show because he can just spew knowledge like I cannot. I can just make people laugh. That is my thing. Hit knowledge is his thing. But you know what? Team opposites attract. Yeah, we vibes. Um, it is the 30th of, I was going to say May, but it's not May, the 30th of March, and it is nasty outside. I don't know if you've been outside lately, but it was snowing and sleeting, and we're going to get that rain tomorrow, and that does not make me happy. But that just means one more day closer to turkey season. I have second week, so I'm really pumped for that, and I'll be getting a new slate call because I tried my diaphragm calls again, and that just... I laugh. I laugh constantly because it tickles. I don't know. Okay, so I'm talking to them already, but let me introduce them. <laughs> uh, we have Willow Becklin. I had to ask her last name at least a dozen times because I cannot. I'm so bad with last names. Um, but Willow credit. Becklin and then Jennifer Straw. Hi. How's it going? Going really good. great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to introduce you right away because I'm going to start talking to you guys because I can ramble, but I can't ramble, ramble by myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I met these two lovely ladies when I went out, um, actually through Facebook, because I found a ticket kit ice fishing. And don't remember what lake it was on. Do you remember what lake it was on? Schoolhouse. Schoolhouse Lake. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I was I was really pumped for that. I wanted to take a kid ice fishing. That's what we do. That's what you're supposed to do. Teach the next generation what's going on. Get them outdoors while we can. Before summer takes over and they don't want to do anything with us. Um, But you guys, both of you were mentors. I guess you could call them mentors, right? You were just, you were there helping. You were there. You were teaching the kids how to do it. Um, My first question is, how did you get hooked up with that? Yeah, so um, we're actually part of a bass angling group out of Watertown called CNR Bass Anglers. Mm. Um, and the guy that puts on the Take a Kid Ice Fishing event, he came to one of our meetings. And we, we've been helping with that a couple years. So he came to one of our meetings, um, kind of explained his thought mm. process behind it, that he basically just wants to get kids out fishing, get them hooked Perfect. on the... That's what, what's what should happen. Exactly. <laughs> so he talked to us. Um, I thought it was a great opportunity. So I shared it a bunch, volunteered, and then... Went out and did it, and it was a lot of fun seeing the kids just light up. Even oh, yeah. even though we were catching like mini bluegills, <laughs> they were but just it was big in their hands. Yes, exactly. they were so tiny. <laughs> so it was like our normal size to them. Hey, a fish and a fish is a fish for their age. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It is little French fries. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't care. Just seeing what comes out of the hole, they have no idea. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, just seeing our faces too. I was so pumped. I was so excited. Um, but well, how did did you get involved the same exact way? Just by yeah, same exact way. I'm also involved in the CNR Bass Angler Club. So what does CNR stand for? Catch and Release. Yes. Oh, that's nice. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, so do you, would you eat bass? Do you eat bass? No. No, I absolutely not. Have you not. tried it? <laughs> Have you tried it? Also no. <laughs> then how can you say no if you I haven't tried I actually, it? I don't eat any fish. It's <laughs> what? It's really silly. I always tell myself, I always tell everyone that... I never reap the rewards of any of my harvest, you know. Like, but you do let them go. Take a picture, picture and release. Yep. Picture it didn't happen. F- <laughs> I did eat my first bluegill when Jen fried it up for me, maybe <gasps> oh, three, months ago. two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you, those bluegills were caught two hours before we fried them up. So they fresh lake to plate. Fresh you lake know, to plate. You know what? This makes me realize <laughs> that you have not actually experienced a Wisconsin fish fry. Then nope, nope. Okay, I, ha- so I have true. a couple times. So, actually, no, this I feel. I feel, okay, everybody listening, she is from Pennsylvania. I learned all this. We'll get to this part, but I have to <laughs> I have to say this. I feel like you're not a true Wisconsinite. You can't have a Wisconsin license, a residence, <laughs> unless you go to Wisconsin Fish, right? Am I right? I feel I'm like I'm right. pretty true. I feel I like I have admitted I've gone to Friday Fish Fries. I've yeah. tried haddock. People have told me, you know, give it a shot. I probably ate one bite and said, like, mm, not my okay. thing. Got, Maybe well, it's just the haddock. Maybe I need to try some fresh walleye before. Girl, you got to come to my perch. house. I'll make you a whiskey old fashioned or a brandy old fashioned. Then we can Ooh, have it with some uh, some fresh gills, some fresh oil. Girl, I got some salmon. I got some walleye. <laughs> <laughs> I got this nice new recipe. We can either bake it, fry it, whatever you want. I feel insulted, but now I feel like I have to give this to you. <laughs> you are my take a kid fish fry. Fish fry. <laughs> take a kid fish fry. <laughs> Sorry to call you, kid. I have no, no. idea how old you are. 24. <laughs> oh, I'm 34. 
Nice. There we go. Almost <laughs> take 35. <a> <laughs> Almost take a kid. Um, okay, so how did you get involved with CNR? So I got involved with that through some people I knew um, when I moved down to the area. Um, a lot of my friends do it, so they're like, you should pick it up. I had actually had done one other bass tournament before, but didn't bring a fish in because my partner and I didn't know what we were doing. Hey, got to start somewhere though, right? <laughs> so then they're like, you should join this and start doing tournaments. And at first it was extremely intimidating to me. I oh yeah, I mean, I'd bass fish for fun, but never competitively. And it was random boat draw, so it was when I first started, I was jumping in random people's boats. People <gasps> no, I didn't know. Really? That's it wasn't. A thing? Yep. Oh, <gasps> so it was random terrifying. boat draw. Like before each tournament, they draw a name out of the hat, and that's who you're paired with. So it wasn't like one person that I knew that I was always getting in the boat with. Oh. So I was terrified my first that couple does ones. That terrifying. <laughs> but everyone in our club is so inviting, and it's not like obviously we're all very competitive. But it's that's always good. the boaters are willing to help the co anglers learn, especially that's us nice. where we didn't know what we were doing initially right. yeah so they've been really good about helping us um kind of with baits colors learning patterns those kind of things so yeah. i mean after my first term and i was i was totally fine with it like i was totally comfortable all the dudes are really cool you can say it, you were hooked you can use I that was hooked. you can use that <laughs> i will 100 percent accept that love it well that's really neat because Maybe, you see, this is how conversations get started. This is how you get other people in the outdoors. This is also why 12% of Wisconsin licenses have been up because of women. 92,000 women are in, um, really? registered for last year That's to hunt news. and fish. Yeah, right. yeah isn't that fantastic? Increase. Absolutely. And I think I was, I was trying to find some st- statistics <laughs> um, from like five years ago, 10 years ago, but like I, I couldn't because it's just all antler antler lists all that kind of stuff not actually like female ones Mm -hmm. that just to me shows that women are now seeing the doors open to us like we are now realizing we can do this compared to 10 15 years ago when we couldn't did you guys start hunting fishing right away when like like from childhood did you guys start or did you start later in um life because 18 to 24 18 to 34 are the now fastest growing female population trying to get mm-hmm. hunting licenses. So right. I'm definitely one of those because I didn't start hunting until 11 years ago. Did you start early? So I actually started fishing right from when I was a kid. My dad did a ton of ice fishing. So that's kind of how Aww. I started. I, there, I have a picture of me when I was like four years old, just scooping ice out of the hole. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't Aww. jig. Couldn't do anything with the tip ups. <laughs> but I was awesome. fascinated scooping the ice out of the hole and looking at the fish. And then obviously I went out with him and my brother like every weekend in the winters. Mm. Um, so just pick that up as I went. As I got older, I loved doing it constantly out there. I mainly started with like tip up fishing and then moved to jigging actually probably just two years ago. So I'm pretty oh, new nice. to that, but loving it. You did so good with the kids. Like you seemed like you knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> Got some good teachers yeah, that taught me. Well, that's perfect. Absolutely. What about you, Willow? Miss Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Pennsylvania, she did not start um, taking fishing very seriously until she moved to Wisconsin waters. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my I was getting tired one day, and I told my dad I didn't want to sit in the cab of the tractor anymore. And he told the farm hands, you know, it's time for you guys to take her out fishing for lunch. Aww. And little farm pond, cows running all around. And uh, I caught a few bluegills, and that's when I was hooked. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, Aww. we went. Um, my best friend in elementary school, not a fisherman herself, but she had a lake house. And across the road, there was a dock. And thunderstorm was rolling in and i remember this i was seven years old and we just hit lights out crappies oh dang. and i just remember the owner constantly walking outside of her door always having to take the hooks off of, out of our fish because we <laughs> it was that young we could put the worm on but yep. we absolutely could not take the fish off oh yeah when they swallow it man i feel but i still feel guilty she had for her, that up she had her rain gear on she had an umbrella and she just camped out with us the whole hunt the whole thunderstorm Aww. just That's helping us out. She realized that um, she needed to tell my mom how much I loved fishing. So uh, my mom found that out and said, you know, your grandpa was a fisherman. Aww. And uh, at that time, my grandpa was going through some health issues. So he wasn't really on the fisher, you know, fishing uh, sidelines anymore. But um, all of a sudden, I took it up. My mom taught me the rest of the ropes uh, to do more independent fishing and I stuck that way for 18 years, and I moved out to Wisconsin, and 
didn't realize the sport was so serious out here. <laughs> yeah, we take, kind we of a take surprise. things outdoors. Like, Wisconsin is the absolute greatest place to be an avid outdoorsman. Absolutely. Like, from sure. hiking to bird watching to fishing to hunting to everything. Ev- literally everything. Shed hunting. Mm-hmm. Morales. Mm-hmm. Like... It's, it's that season right now, coming up to turkey season, which we'll <laughs> right, get to right, that yeah. in a little bit. And yeah, and I snacks. To, and snacks. And snacks. <laughs> and snacks. Of course. I, yeah. I moved to Wisconsin for America's dairy land. Didn't really, didn't really realize that it was going to be fishing land, too. Yeah. fishing waters too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for that. And I wish I started a lot earlier. And like I said, I started 11 years ago from Bill. Bill taught me how to do everything. He lit. All my knowledge is his knowledge transferred to me. And then I added my little twist on it because I'm Danielle. I have to add a twist. Of course. Yeah. I think all of us can agree that we're very thankful for those mentors that we had. And we hope Mm -hmm. that we can be them for the younger generation or even anybody who is willing to come outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Because growing up, too, um, not only ice fishing, but my parents had a cottage. Our grandparents did. So my cousins, my brother, we'd all go out there. My mom would take us fishing. We'd just kind of like go on the docks down the beach because I mean, that's we had cool. a rowboat, but it was kind of fun just going on the docks oh, yeah. and I would do going down too, by the swamp. So that's how we kind of started there too with open water fishing. It was mainly just panfish starting and then cast out randomly for bass. Didn't know anything at the time about it. I was just like, <laughs> you just cast something out and they bite eventually. Yeah, logical. It's not quite how it does. <laughs> just throw a piece of corn out there <laughs> tied to a little string and pull it in that's how i learned how to fish it was only corn and peanut butter yep. that was it my mom called and hot 23 dogs. right uh, <laughs> big northern <laughs> big northern <laughs> tip ups <Let's> yes. <laughs> uh, but when we get back um we're going to talk about bass fishing because i really want to know more about that and more about the cnr because i want i i want you guys to be my mentor because i've wanted to get into that forever but We'll keep that for the next segment. You're listening to Raised in Wisco. Call us at 844-967-2789. Well, it's mine not to rock. No watching that old clock. Oh, ain't no doubt. Lord, it's a girl's night out. Friday finally came around. This girl's ready to paint the town. Tonight ain't nothing gonna slow me down. Let's go, girls. I feel like I'm gonna kick the wheel down. I feel like even if you hate this song, you know that first part. Yep, Calvin, you're jamming too, Calvin, aren't you? I, I know this song. You know this song? Do you do a little line dance, Calvin? I don't, but I grew up and this is what my mom would play. Or not this specifically, but country music is what my mom played in the car on the way to school every morning. I like your mom. Your mom seems like a pretty cool chick. I like it. Um, so this this uh, music playlist is because uh, of Calvin. I appreciate it, Calvin. Perfect. Calvin's badass. He, oh, see, look, I did it. There it is. I did it. <laughs> oh, there it <laughs> is. You did not hear that bad. <laughs> You're just awesome. Just awesome. Um, crap. See, <laughs> stuff like that happens. <laughs> Got to okay. replace it with Ope. 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 Uh, speaking of Ope, uh, we had the reruns on Saturday, followed by uh, Charlie Ban- Barron's show. So I'm super excited about that. So if you're missing us tonight, you can either find us on Apple or Spotify or listen to us on Saturday. Again, give us a call at 844-967-2789. We are here with Willow Vecklin and Jennifer Straw. I'm so excited I can say your last name correctly. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you saw my post online on my social medias, but I'm famous for spelling things incorrectly. I think I might make this into a game. Just like have random words and then they all make up one word at the end of the month or something. I don't know. Just be like, did she mean to do that? Did it? Yeah. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> but I'm sitting on my couch and I try to plan all this and sometimes it just doesn't work out because I get too fast, like fixated on one thing and I forget about the other things and it's just, you know spiral woman's head (laughs) just goes down and down and down domino domino but um before break we talked about how both of you got into it which is fantastic um both of you inspired me to pursue more bass fishing because i would love to bass fish because for one i don't like eating bass but i have a bass i have tried it i don't like it do not like it um 
also do not like northern. I, I can't. It's just too too fishy for me, I guess you could say. But it is a fishier fish. It is a fishier fish <laughs> with their technical faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, but CNR. How does one get into this? And how many, how many, okay, I'm going to bring it up because this is a woman, woman show right now. How many women are in CNR? How big is CNR? Is CNR just Wisconsin? Get some more information about this. Yeah, so CNR is um, a southern Wisconsin group. It's out of Watertown. It was founded, mm-hmm. I think, in the 1980s. I might be wrong about that. Sorry if I am. <laughs> um, but so it's been around a while. Um, we, there's actually, I think, what, like 25 members maybe in there? Oh, maybe a little nice. more. Yeah. So it's a good size. We have a good size boat turnout for tournaments probably. I mean, it ranges. Sometimes there's six. Sometimes there's 10. Sometimes there's more boats. Um, we... Happen to be the only females in the club, though. The only females? That's, that's right. Actually, that's there great. is that's Joe's girlfriend, Melissa, now that joined. Okay. I have so there's met three. Melissa. Okay, there we go. That's very sweet. Aww. Um, But when I started in CNR two years ago, I was the only woman in it. Yeah. So that also was a bit um, intimidating along yeah. with just not knowing that much into bass fishing. Yeah, that would be very intimidating. But with like... Well, so from walleye fishing to bass fishing, it's completed from ice fishing to bass fishing. Every fishing is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You need different tackle boxes, <laughs> lunch boxes to go with that. Um, so with bass fishing, what is, do you use, okay, give me more information about someone just starting bass fishing. Like what, what would they need to get into it? Okay. Obviously a rod and, you know, all the basic, but more like information, like what type of lures, like poppers, like little Frogger popper topper thing bobbers, you know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know about. what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, there's such a wide variety. It depends kind of what you're targeting. Um, I'd say one of the first things, obviously, most people can use like an open bale bait or um just rod mm-hmm. and reel. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing you'd want to get good at is with a bait caster that's a little bit more tricky um to cast, but once you get it down, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, those are just two different kinds of ways you can target fish um so right. i think the being that versatile um because if you're frog fishing you're going to want a bait caster if you're drop shotting you're going to want an open bail so it's like you have to kind of be versatile with what your boater's doing because you have to go along with what your boater is deciding to do um and you're just kind of there for the ride and to adjust how they do it right? yeah so for my first cnr bass angler uh tournament in june i got so lucky i got i Drew Brad Knight for our for my first boater, um, great guy, um, very welcoming. Definitely didn't keep me intimidating for intimidated for that um, part of the entire That's tournament. Um, that was my biggest worry was I'm gonna make a fool of myself. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> the first she was very tournament. nervous. <laughs> but honestly, um, I had three lines. I I had three rods. All of them were spinning. Re- Spinning reels, I did not have any bait casters ready to go, but I had, a, you know, you have your trusted ways of, you know, finesse fishing. I had, a, I flipped a Senko most of the day, um, drop shotting, thank goodness I had that. And then either your Carolina or Texas rig, those are three trusted bass um, tournament methods that, you know, were successful because obviously I won that tournament, that oh, did you? angler tournament. The yeah. first one she jumped in. Oh. <laughs> Whooped everyone's <Thanks>, butt. <laughs> and I think, Big bass. I think, didn't you beat out, did you beat out all of the boaters for the total weight? I don't, I don't recall. It wasn't recall. That quite was that. 13 pounds, I think. Yeah, you were oh, either dogs. the top close. or close to the top out of everybody, including the boaters. And your first one. Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Everybody was having a pretty rough day, and I just <laughs> flipped the Senko on top of the weeds. Everybody was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, flipping a Senko. <laughs> this is what I'm doing, duh. You don't know what I'm doing? I mean, I was just, I think my nerves, um, you know, they were le- a lot less once I was catching fish before Brad and I, and once Brad and I, he was catching a ton of fish, but mostly he got a few pike. And I limited out. Thank God. That's awesome. Because <laughs> I would have felt terrible if I didn't. Well, we're going to talk more about that when you get back. Oh, when we get back, not just you. And then we also have a couple callers on the line. So we'll get to them when we get back. Give us a call at 844-967-2789. It's the song. Man. It's the song. It's the hype. <laughs> I feel like a woman.
I have a thing to admit. I'm 34 years old, right? Spice Girls are my jam so hard. <laughs> I want to be there. So we, my friends and I did a bunny putt putt. I was supposed to, but I had to work. So it, was, it snowed. It gave us what six, eight inches, ten inches. I don't know. So much snow uh, last weekend. That's when I had the first Saturday plan to go. You know, have fun with the girls. It was a bunny putt putt, and I was trying to convince them so hard. Let's go as a team as the Spice Girls. <laughs> they said no. Lame. Like immediately, I would have no. <laughs> like no, uh, no. I'm like, but 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 you can be whatever you want. I'll be Baby Spice if you want me to be Baby Spice. <laughs> No, hard pass. Hard pass. Oh, missed opportunity. I know. I need to find some Spice Girl friends. I don't know why. Okay, but. I'd join Spice yeah, Girl friend. Let's go. Let's do <laughs> you it. You got the crew right here. Done. Done. <laughs> okay, this is this is a woman podcast, but not a Spice Girl podcast. Back to hunting and fishing. Um, so, you gave us good um, lures for bass fishing. Um, we talked about Brian. We talked about how you got into it, which is all very absolutely interesting. <laughs> now we're going to bring up a different topic, how I messed up with turkey hunting. Because I thought you guys, <laughs> I assumed since you guys were talking to me nonstop about outdoors, about hunt, about fishing pretty much, I just assumed <laughs> that you were into turkey hunting. So have either of you ever been turkey hunting before? I haven't been turkey hunting. Um, growing up, my dad and my brother always deer hunt. So I've mm-hmm. done every deer hunting activity deer camp <laughs> under the sun i've sat with my dad before um my brothers shot them and help i've helped him track them um i've helped do everything gut them skin them process them we we do it all ourselves versus taking it in so i've Perfect. done literally everything Same. except for shoot one and i've actually been <gasps> wanting to get into that recently i don't know why i ever like didn't want to initially mm-hmm. but that's something i definitely want to take up yeah so have you willow so I grew up in a family who does not hunt, but oh. when I was here in Wisconsin, I took it upon myself to go up to Juneau, Monroe County's public land, and I shot my first cow of a deer in two miles back from the truck, Ooh. Um, and I think I ruined every single hunter's last day of the <laughs> season. Going out with a bang, um, literally. And let me say, I shot that deer 30 at 6 in a Sorry, pair of tie-dye crops. <laughs> Of course, everybody knows I have Bannon in the studio, and he, we changed his food. Oh, no. Oh, and we're in a tiny little bubble. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure it over Sorry. here soon. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Oh, my goodness. This is, Joel will be shaking his head right now if he's hearing this. Um, okay, continue your story. Oh, my goodness. So, um, it was the, <laughs> it was the last host over day. There. It was the last day. I forgot my boots. I'm wearing my Crocs in the marsh. <laughs> And I shot my first cow of a deer uh, on the final day with a 30 out 6. Now, Good for you. Um, I have discovered I did it once. I don't think hunting is for me. I'll stick with the 365 days of fishing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I, unless it's private land, maybe. Yes. I was very uncomfortable on public land not knowing where people were, and I felt horrible for ruining everybody's last day. Well, it, it was obviously gun season and everything, right? Yeah. So yeah. everyone should be wearing orange as it is. They were. And now they thanks were. to Joel Clayfish, at Goss Woman can wear pink, too. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Joel's the one that passed that. Really? Yep. <laughs> Good old Joel, our host. See, I told you, he's a man with the knowledge. He's yes. the man with the plan. <laughs> and he is not here, but we can thank him. Thank him right now for letting us women wear pink. Yes, but I don't wear pink. So, sorry, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> the option's there. Yeah, the option is there. The option is there. That's um, how we increase those uh, statistics oh, that yeah. we were talking that 12%, about earlier. Yeah. 92,000. Like, that's absolutely mind-blowing to me. Hopefully, next year we can get up to 100,000. I don't remember. I remember seeing... On Realtree.com, I think there was 2.1 million hunters or something like that. I feel like that's a lot less than I think. I, feel, I want to say 2.1 million hunters in the U.S., like combined total, mm-hmm. which is huge. But I couldn't find just a woman's statistic. Right. But like I remember seeing 44% of them are women, but I don't remember this for Wisconsin or for the U.S. I have no idea. But we're getting out there. I, I and, think it's the same way for everything, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, women are getting more into male-dominated fields, farming, hunting, fishing, um, all of those things, because we're, you know, having mentors and volunteers. Social mm-hmm. media that has a huge impact mm-hmm. it on, does. you know, increasing and getting those women out there and feeling more confident to say, I can do this myself. I don't, you know. And I also a- think COVID helped us 
too right. because yeah, we wanted absolutely. to provide for our family too. We couldn't do anything. We wanted to be outside. And you can go out there without a dang mask. Yep. I don't <sighs> That's a whole oh, other yeah. <laughs> story that we can't even bring up right now. How many times did we go fishing with COVID not knowing if we were exposed or not? Yeah, but, we're like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll get out of the house. This fishing, we can stay six feet if we uh-huh. really had to. Yeah. Don't cough on me. We'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, look that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I completely agree with you. It is blo- booming because of social media. Social media is a huge part. That's how I met both of you. Mm-hmm. And just talking like this, it's, I'm hoping that we can continue this. And be friends outside of here and help me get in with CNR. Figure more about that because that would be awesome. Bill will only take me walleye fishing. (sighs) Missing out. We'll take the trade. We go go right past the cane beds. And I'm just like, just let me, just just right here. Just stop. (laughs) But he won't. Sometimes. Like once every ten times he will. But It's like flip a sink on there real quick. Crack one. And be like, what did you do? Nothing. Nothing. (laughs) Hold on. (laughs) Um. Then maybe I can bring both of you out turkey hunting. I think that would be an awesome that, trade. Yeah, because awesome um, right now, I don't know if anybody listening has bought leftover tags. Leftover tags went on sale on uh, Thursday or Friday last uh, last week. So I believe E and F. So during the spring season, you have to, you get season, season dates. So you get A through F. So that this two weeks from now, three weeks, two weeks, two weeks from now starts the first week, A week, and then my week is B week. And then so on and so forth until F week. But during the fall, you can get those turkeys whenever you want. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, so right now, oh, do you guys know about the patron's license? No? The patron's license. So the patron's license, it, it includes you for all of the licenses you can get out there. Oh, yeah. I've seen. So, I've seen it but obviously you have to go website. get you like your um, waterfall tags and every, uh, stamps, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. But um, it gives you a HIPAA stamp. It gives you... Your fishing gives you turkey, gives you a uh, option for like bear or elk and everything. You can do it all, and it's just a quick one hundred and seventy dollars, one hundred and seventy six. Wow. Donate some money to the um, Wildlife Foundation, all that kind of stuff. But it's like perfect because I forget everything. Um, <laughs> I have <laughs> to have a reminder, so if I just can buy all this at once, one and done, done, which is perfect. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> I really need that. Um, but yes, no, I will. If you two follow through with getting your turkey tags, like leftover tags, I have a couple farmers that have, it's private land. I do. More confidence on private land. Yeah, more confidence, <laughs> which I totally understand that. Because when I first started, mm-hmm. I didn't want to go out in public land either. Because you hear, you only hear the horror stories. Yep. That's like, that's all you hear. But you don't hear, like, on the Sportsman channel, there is public land hunters. Or YouTube or whatever like that. You can go on YouTube. It's public land hunters. Like, they strictly just hunt public land. Mm-hmm. You know how much... One of us need to Google this. How many how many acres of public land are in Wisconsin? That's why Wisconsin is the greatest outdoor place to be right now because you, there's so much available to us, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but across the street from where I live, there is I don't know. I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull a number like 500 acres, but it's muzzle lo- muzzle loader only, and then bull. So there's no shotguns, no rifles, no nothing flying over your head. If someone mm-hmm. can shoot me from 200 yards away with a bow, then like. Go right ahead, because that's, like, that's that's pretty impressive. skill. I will happily take this arrow <laughs> through my arm, because <laughs> that's some did. skill. <laughs> See, and that was the other thing too. I um, it was the first week of archery, and I was on public land back on Juno M- Monroe, and I'm sitting at the base of a tree, and I thought I shot a doe, and all of a sudden, apparently, I ruined another guy's hunt because he was in the tree stand. I didn't even see him fifty feet behind me. <gasps> oh well, that's what public land is. That happens. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, and if that was the case, did I would have felt horrible. Job. That's all right. <laughs> it happens. That's what public land is. And yeah, I missed he that wasn't. doe. <laughs> did you? I missed that doe. I, I thought I actually smacked it. I called my friend, and I was like, I think I have one down two hundred yards out. And well. It was actually 30, 30 yards where I shot it, but I think it felt, it ran straight back. Yeah. And I he says, I'm 200 yards away. I'll be back and we can track it and trampling over everything. The tree stand comes down and you're like, oh, <laughs> we just <laughs> ruined the whole morning for you guys. Sorry. Well, it happens. <laughs> like, I thought it was yeah. my first go, but then all of a sudden he gets out, he gets out of the tree stand. Him and his dad come, come around the corner and there's two doe in the back of the truck. <laughs> Oh. So we have no idea. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Dang, who knows? But, yeah, I have a cross. I had a crossbow. I broke my wrist way too many times. To I was going to say pull one back. <laughs> I was going to say. So what? 
for you being 24 years old, why did you get a crossbow? Because yeah. yeah, I broke my wrist way too many times, and oh, I had no. a dislocated shoulder in high school. No, so. really? Uh, crossbow is a lot easier for me to manage. I believe it. I definitely believe that. But. I used to shoot bow for fun. Like yeah. my brother, he got as he obviously grew older, he needed a bigger one, more a heavier draw. So he gave me his old one, and I just shoot and practice and have fun. Oh, perfect. Again, I don't know why I didn't take it up. I had fun doing it. It's fun though, isn't it? It is. Fun. And now that it's available to high school students too, like they have these actual archery leagues in shot uh, clay leagues mm-hmm. yeah. in high school. Like I didn't. I would have done that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have that. In Shout high out to Troy High School in P- Troy, Pennsylvania. They yeah. had archery in our uh, gym class and like tenth oh, grade. We did that in New London. And, yeah, it was yeah. just like just like little yeah, the, like, targets the, yeah, inside, like a little yeah. plastic recurve and sh- stuff. I mean, of course, that was everybody's favorite week in gym yeah. class because everybody <laughs> in my hometown, um, everybody's farmers and everybody's hunters. I was like the oddball out. I was just the farmer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everybody's favorite week was. <laughs> You know the archery. Yeah. Uh, that's really fun. I I I really wish I got into this a lot earlier. And hopefully people were listening. Hopefully we can. You guys did with take a kid ice fishing. Like Amber. Mm-hmm. Amber loved. Well, she calls you her best friend. That yeah. is so cute. It I is. can't wait to meet my best friend when she calls in. <laughs> I know. I text her. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's happening. I sent my sister Jessica. They are in. I I don't. I honestly don't know. I should know where people are, but I don't. <laughs> I really Amber's- don't. Amber's going to catch her first pike on a hot dog on a tip-up here soon. (laughs) (laughs) When are they go next year? (laughs) Oh, they're in Tennessee. Okay, they're in Tennessee right now visiting a friend. But yeah, I told them to call and they said they would because they were so excited about it. Um, But Eastern time, don't make a mistake. I do that a lot. I do that a lot being from Pennsylvania. We'll just have to get them out on the boat. There we go. Summer. Perfect. Catch some bass. Couple kayaks on the... I want to catch some bass too. We we'll 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 definitely need to do this. Oh, definitely. I have access to a boat now, so oh, I can take a ladies' right? trip out. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Speaking of lady, ladies' trip, um, stiletto, stiletto archery league. Have you heard of this? No. So not. whale tails archery. Um, they have a fishing, a bull fishing event in June. Usually falls either the week before my birthday or the week after my birthday. Um. It's just like five or six bow fishing boats get together, five or six girls per boat, and all of us go out bow fishing and then drinking afterwards. I would love to do that. I've always wanted to bow fish. Yeah. My first um, Wisconsin water experience was yeah. bow fishing. Was Believe it? it or not. You yep. first one. My first time on the water on a boat in Wisconsin was bow fishing. Proud. And I, <laughs> I was watching people just with all this carp in yeah. front of us, and I was like, so these are invasive. We have to get rid of them. Like, how do we solve this issue when they're <laughs> spa- when they spawn thousands and thousands <laughs> of eggs every time? <laughs> and uh, you know, I my first shot was actually on land, and it was a buffalo carp. And I was like, okay, next time I want to catch all those pike, all the walleye I saw out there, the crappie and the bluegills that were sleeping Taking in notes, bed. Pins, yeah, where, where are you? Some waypoints. Right uh-huh. <laughs> you cannot fish while you're bow fishing, though. No. <laughs> You yeah. cannot. That is illegal in Wisconsin. <laughs> Missed opportunity. <laughs> but now you know where they're camping out, so you can go mm-hmm. in the next morning. <laughs> so did you have? Did you experience the insane neighbors while you were bow fishing with their lights? Oh yeah. I was gonna say yeah. every well, at least two or three houses get angry that we go out there with our bright lights and oh, okay. do all that kind of stuff. The Karens. Yeah. Oh, yes, exactly, the Karens. <laughs> One guy actually threw, I don't know if he threw a rock or something, he was throwing rocks right at us. Like he was, oh, my gosh. He was obviously, you know, had a couple of root beers, and they were having a bonfire, but whatever. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Some you long drinks. You cannot win them all. Exactly. <laughs> um, when we get back, we're going to talk about inspiration for the woman for the future generation, and we're going to get the last segment with Ted Nugent. Stay tuned. <laughs> From the redneck girls like me. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah. I said hell yeah! <laughs>
Whoa. Such a good song. Whoa. Such a good song. Um, you're listening to Raised in Wisco, The Shaw 101 FM 540 WAUK. You can listen to us on Spotify or Apple right after the show for a podcast. So you continue listening to us on um, your radio, your internet. We're at Facebook Live on WAUK um, Facebook or Instagram. I don't know if they have an Instagram. Yeah, they have an Instagram too. Um, or even better, give us a call at 844-967-2789. Either join the conversation or just give us a topic. Do whatever. Call us. Hang out. Bring us food at 217 Wisconsin Avenue. We're in the big old fishbowl. Like yeah. I always tell people <laughs> to bring snacky. us food. They never bring us food. <laughs> um, so the second part of the segment, we have good old Uncle Ted. I'm so thrilled and pumped. I actually got to talk to him. It was the greatest thing. Like, not many people that I know. Okay, I know one person that talked to him before. Um, but, like, dude, Uncle Ted. Does Uncle Ted have an influence on you guys? Do you know who Uncle Ted is? I, I don't. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my palms are all sweaty. <laughs> all right. We're gonna, this is a whole conversation for after the after the show. But Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted, um, Spirit of the Wild, Call of the Wild. He is the no-all, be-all of the, everything outdoors. Literally everything outdoors. Um, but we have a the second part of our conversation at the end of this part. Of segment. Wow, Daniel, that was just... you're also forgetting that he's <gasps> a rock star. Oh, I always forget <laughs> he is a rock star because you know what? I did not listen. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Well, thank you very much for reminding us that he is a rock star. I don't even know the name. Do you know the name of the, his his band? I know you do, Calvin. I don't claim to know that. <gasps> oh well, at least you brought that up because thank you for bringing that up. I didn't say I was an avid listener. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Well, perfect. Thank you, Calvin. Um. But before we get into that, word of the wise. Be the mentor to all the little children out there, all the young adults, young women, everybody. Jen, what do you have to say to your younger self, future generation? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, going back to how I started into bass fishing, like like I mentioned, I was scared initially. I was scared going in. I didn't have that much experience. I was the only female in the club. But kind of going with that fear and just facing it head on, I made some of the best friends in the club. I've learned so much, and I really value the entire experience as a whole. Um, Kind of facing that fear really helps you grow as a person. I know it's kind of cliche, but Mm -hmm. it really did in that situation, and I really wouldn't be where I am now with the bass fishing if it wasn't for that situation. Absolutely. Well, though? Um, I think, you know, looking back at my younger self, you know, having the courage to try something new and... um, grow you can always find mentors and valuable um you know best friends that can help you grow as a fisherman as a hunter as an agriculturalist anything in a male-dominated field um social media is a powerful tool Mm -hmm. and you can look up to so many women that way oh you definitely Um, can so if i could say anything uh be courageous support local reach out reach out definitely reach out to us if you want if you're interested in anything we've mentioned yeah. we'd be happy like we're gonna take you bass fishing you're yeah. gonna take us turkey hunting that would be new that'd be new but definitely uh um be courageous um support local and eat beef and catch fish yeah. let's I go like it. i like it a lot <laughs> there it is um, <laughs> so you can find both of you on social media you are real lady of the lake and i'm jennifer marie fishing yes because i that that threw me for a little kid yeah <laughs> you have to <laughs> <laughs> um but I really appreciate you guys coming on the show. And so I want to get to this last part of the interview with Ted Nugent. It was absolutely fantastic. I actually learned a lot about wolf hunting and how it's such a controversy in Wisconsin. And Mm -hmm. it was fascinating to hear what he had to say about it. So uh, stay tuned and listen. So, Uncle Ted, wolf conservation is a huge controversy in Wisconsin. What is your take on that? You know, if we manage the wolf like we manage white-tailed deer, I, as in an annual harvest of the surplus to keep the habitat balanced and the, and the structure balanced, there are more deer than ever. Certainly, we want we want wolves to be in optimal, thriving populations, but right now, they're they're off limits. They're untouchable because of the lie 
that they're endangered. They're not endangered. Right, they're right. overpopulated in the upper peninsula of Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin. We should manage them within the carrying capacity of those resources and those habitats so that they maximize revenue generation and family hours of recreation. And again, Joel, I'm just a guitar player, but I figured this out <laughs> as I was growing up in the deer woods of Michigan with my dad and Fred Bear. And I know that tradition is alive and well, but if the hunting families don't vote, then the anti-hunters and the animal rights liars and scammers, they will win. And currently they're winning with the wolf. So let's make sure that we vote and put pressure on our elected employees in the great state of Wisconsin to make sure that the wildlife, particularly the wolf, is in the asset column as a renewable resource instead of a the liability column, which is a lie that they're endangered. They're not endangered. They're, the whole state will be endangered if we don't manage wolves responsibly. Yeah, and you know what? Right now, the wolves are decimating the populations of deer uh, in northern Wisconsin. And I think sometimes, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I think sometimes people who utilize the outdoors want to just use the outdoors and be stewards in the outdoors and want to be left alone. And I think one of the things that's tough to encourage them to do sometimes is actually understand that their input, their vote, and their involvement in what happens in the capitals of every state across this country makes a real difference as to how they get to be left alone in the woods and waters. Bingo. This is a sacred experiment in self-government, the only one in the history of the human experience where we, the people, based on truth, logic, self-evident truth, self-evident truth, logic and common sense, that our elected employees at every level of government, they work for we, the people, based on those standard, those traditional family values, God, family, country, constitution, bill of rights, 10 commandments, golden rule, sound science, wildlife management to keep it healthy and thriving, law and order. And all those things I just mentioned, Joel, are now considered radical. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Ted Nugent, and I'm radical <laughs> because I dare to experiment in self-government. So I've always been attacked for murdering innocent animals because these liars and scammers don't realize that if you don't hunt deer every year or turkey or pheasant or geese or cougars or bears or whatever the resource might be, if you don't harvest the surplus before winter destroys the habitat That's until right. springtime regeneration, that those wildlife resources will just suffer and, and, and be terrorized as they overpopulate, destroy the habitat. And, and just to make it um, relative to everybody out there, everybody's quality of life begins with quality air, soil, and water. The only way you can have quality thriving air, soil, and water is if you manage wildlife species so they don't devastate the habitat and the environment, which will destroy the air, soil, and water. So, you know, I'm just a simple guitar player, but I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a neighbor, I'm a hunter, I'm a guide, I'm an outfitter, I'm a guitar player, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm living the American dream. And, no and I understand the simplicity of sustaining... Uncle Ted. I could sit here and listen to him all day long. Um, but a huge thank you to Charmaine and Ted. Thank you to Willow and Jen for coming out. Please get out there in the outdoors. Get out there and vote on April 4th. Go to huntthevote.com or hunternation.com to find out more.